How are we going, everybody? Well, summer truly is nearly over, especially down here where we are. It's uh, pretty cold out here today, 18 degrees, and the same for the next four or five days. Our summer crop is nearly finished and we're about to start sowing our autumn range. And what I love here is we've actually put a new kit together for you guys to try it at home. It's an autumn kit and it comes with a mini hothouse and it's a great little unit. Some of you may have got these hothouses last time, last winter, but this time we've actually got an autumn winter range pack going on here, which includes your, your hothouse, which is your top and top lid, your, your basically your dome lid and your base tray there. And it comes with a thermostat and a heat mat seed sower, bottle top sprinklers, pocket pruners, Rudex gel, that's my seed sower, labels, liquid gold, eco butch, butch. We've also got our uh, peat pots there as well and one and a half kilos of refill because we're always trying to save as much plastic as possible. So we're doing refills, refills as well. Have a look at that on, online. So that comes with that. Now we've also got here big malaka. We've got lettuce, kale, uh, broccoli, cauliflower and silver beet. So all these come with this kit and I'm going to show you how to ISO my seeds basically. Uh, one thing I did want to go through because some of you ask because it has, let me get this stuff out of the way. Oh, look at all this stuff you get with it. What comes with the kit is a 32 cell tray and a 72 cell tray. Now the benefit of these trays folks is that you can sow your each seedling, each seed that is one by one in each cell here so you don't get the roots tangling up and you can see how the cells tapered down to the, towards the bottom and it's got a couple of holes at the bottom there so you can see all that there. Have a look inside here as well. It tapers down so it makes it so much easier for you to take out the seedling without damaging the roots. So you don't have to tease the roots out or anything like that. Simply pull it out of the plug, put it straight in the ground and that saves you all the time. Now the base tray itself acts as a reservoir so when you do water them it holds the moisture underneath. Now the benefit of the heat mat because it is getting cold, it's going to keep the temperature of that soil or the seed raising mix at an optimal level, about 18 degrees to 22 degrees, which is perfect. So you can get your seeds to germinate within five days, five to seven days quite easily. Now, for some of you who've already got a hot house and a heat mat and thermostat, you can have multiple hot houses with the one thermostat. That's this one here. And I'll show you how easy it is to install. So this is the mat itself that you get with it. Uh, you can buy it in the kit that is, but you can buy multiple mats if you like, if you want to have two hot houses as I'm going to set up here. Now, the thermostat itself, beautiful little unit, have a look at that. Now I'm just going to plug it up, get it ready and turn it on. So what I'm going to show you when you're running only one mat, you basically plug it up to the actual thermostat like that and that's your main power and it has this little probe which is basically a thermometer and it reads the temperature of your soil. Set your soil temperature to whatever desired temperature you want it to be. I'd say around 22 to 24 degrees. It never reaches that temperature. It'll always sit a few degrees below it. And that's simple and it'll turn on and off when it needs to if the soil's heating up enough or not enough. Now, if you're running multiple mats, heat mats that is, I'm gonna get tangled up with all this. So we've got our main power, which we're gonna plug up to the uh, power supply like this here. Then we, get ourselves a power board like this one here see that it's a little power board now that's a four four power point power board we plug that up to the thermostat and then our heat mats to the power board so if you've got one thermostat and you want to have five, six hot houses, you could easily have five or six or seven or eight uh, heat mats running in series there, all plugged up to a power board. And all you need to do is make sure you get your little thermometer probe here centralised so it's getting the average temperature between all the thermostats, or sorry, all the heat mats that are lined up. Now, ideally, they all have to be in the same environment. So if you've got a little hot house or a little corner in your garden where it's controlled and, and protected from the environment, set them all up like that and you can have a wonderful series of uh, little hothouses running and getting ready for your autumn winter planting. So let's start planting. All right so what we're going to do here is we're going to set up a 72 cell tray on this side and this side is a 32 cell tray and what I am going to use is uh, these little peat pots that I've got here. Fill it all in 
because we can actually transplant it with these peat pots straight into the ground. And what happens is with this coir, it actually starts to break down when you plant it in the ground and becomes, you know, food for the microbes. Great way to grow. And the roots will penetrate through it. It softens up, but it doesn't collapse that easily. So it's easy to handle. And it's a great way to grow your seedlings. If you've got some larger type seeds, not sure what I'm going to put in these ones yet, but we've got five varieties. And don't sow your big malaka tomatoes. It's way too early for them, folks, to get them in the ground. I know a lot of you have been asking for over almost a year now. I won't say over a year and we did sell out but we have got a lot of stock as far as the supply with these kits of the big malacca tomatoes they're in big demand i don't know if we're going to have more than 100 maybe 200 kits available for everybody so first in first serve basically so when these go online and they're going to be discounted too i know that so grab them while they last so we've got our pots in the ground or in the cells like that Seed raising mix. Now, we're not supplying seed raising mix because it is a too heavy a product to ship out. Uh, postage is expensive, as you all know. That's why we keep bringing our prices down so we can compensate with the postage. But seed raising mix, get yourself a, a good quality one. I use Hal's. That's what I like. It's my favourite. Um, but find whatever you have in your local garden centre. Support them too. So sprinkle this over the top. Try and be as neat as possible. You don't want it to go everywhere. And you don't have to press it down yet. Just spread it through. All right. So we've done the 72 cell tray and we filled out our little peat pots with our seed raising in the 32 cell tray. Get this out of the way. Just quickly on this thermostat, a lot of emails do come in about how to control it. You've got Fahrenheit and Celsius on this here. And it's as simple as pressing up to change to Fahrenheit or pressing the down button to change it back to Celsius. So we're currently sitting at 18.4 degrees. I haven't installed this yet. I'm going to put it just underneath. It is waterproof. You sit it just underneath, if you like, in there or underneath the actual tray itself like that. So that will sit there like that and you'll see it'll start to drop in temperature or go up in temperature. Now to set the temperature, you need to press and hold the set button like that until it starts flashing. There we are. And then we adjust it. So you can see it's been set at 23 degrees. I'm going to take it up to 25 degrees and press the set button and now it's back at 19. It's going to work its way up to that temperature and the heat melt will reach up to that temperature and sustain itself at that level because the thermostat will switch on and off to ensure the power is being fed accordingly so we can heat up. And as we speak, look at it, it's gone up to 23, 23.1. So that heat mat is warming up right now to this temperature. Now, if it's getting too hot too quickly and you find the soil's not warming up, warming up, you can readjust it. And it's a trial and error to work out where the best position is for this little thermostat or probe. So you can stick it in just like that there and it'll do the job just as well. So it'll be closer to the soil. And if you want to be really pedantic, do this, take it out and shove it in. Simple as that, folks. We'll see if it goes up or down in a second. There we go, look, it's going down. There we are, you can see how cold the temperature is in the soil. So if that's the best way for you and you find it's the most optimal way to control the temperature, so be it. Find the central point or a side point. You need to work out the average temperature overall so you can keep the temperature constant, warm enough for the seeds to germinate. And all that does is turns the power on and off, nothing else. Now, before we start sowing, what we need to do is put our labels in place. Now, I'm going to run them lengthways. We're going to put one here in each row, one variety in each row, just like that. We've got our labels in. We haven't named them yet because we don't know what we're putting in the first one. So let's start. Let's see what we've got here. We've got broccoli. Now let's use it. I've got my own seed, seed sower. This is a great little tool, folks. Now it sows your seeds. It helps you drop out the seeds as close to one at a time as possible. And it has a little cap on it with openings on it, different size openings. And it goes from zero all the way to five. So if I could show you what zero is, nothing. There you go. Number one, the number one's on top. You can see how small the opening is. Then you go to number two, and it just gets larger according to the seed side, seed size that you're sowing through. That's a tongue twister. Try and say that three times. The seed size that you're sowing. All right, so let's put our broccolis in here. These seeds, if you're wondering why they're blue, they've been coated with a fungicide just to protect them so they don't rot out. No harm to the seed at all, folks. So we're going to find the right gauge here. I'm going to go with, I think, see what number one's like. Let's just test it out on our hand, see if it comes out. 
Yep, there it is, one. Too easy. Put it back in. Now before we do that, again, get yourself either a pencil, pen, or this little, actually no, I'll get the pen. We've got to put a little divot inside each pop, like that, so we can drop the seed in. Before we go to the next one, folks, write what that is first, otherwise you're going to forget. So this is broccoli. Iceberg lettuce. Winter iceberg, because my kids love iceberg lettuce, so we're going to put lots of these. We'll do it in these little ones here. One there. Two there. Three. Four. And the last one, kale. There we are, folks. Now, the most important part, we've got to water them. Now, the best way to water these little critters is with this drink bottle. Not any old drink bottle. We're going to put five mil. That's about five mil of Eco Boost or Eco Butch. That's its new name. And liquid gold. That's the top range, top shelf seaweed solution, folks. And then we're going to water it with this little spray bottle on ahead. Now, we all have a little watering can at home, don't we? Well, this is a little miniature version of what we can. It's a bottle top sprinkler. And it's been made for my darling wife, Lisa. This is Lisa's water bottle, by the way. And this is what we do for the indoor plants. So we put these little spray bottles on top and then we go over each one. And we give it a little sprinkle like that. Look at that. Now, all that soil is going to sink down. It's going to compact, which is fine. That's what we wanted to do. And when it does germinate, you can, if you like to, add a touch more soil on. Let me just cover these over. I forgot to cover them. It's always important to cover the seeds, folks. That little divot that we created will just keep sinking, but not cover itself. Like that. Beautiful. Look how good this is. Now, EK Butch and Liquid Gold is all it needs to get it going. You don't need to put any other compost or fertilizer or anything like that. Once these grow, just keep watering it with these, this liquid solution every 10 days and just normal water in between when that needs it. And I'll tell you something, these little plants are going to grow so fast. And let's have a look at the thermostat, how it's going. It's sitting at 19.5 degrees at the moment. We're outside, I reckon it's about 16 outside here. So the little reservoir container here, it's actually doing a good job. And we're going to put the lid on and that's going to contain the heat in there perfectly. And remember, the moisture in this soil that we're adding now with the liquid fertilizer, this moisture overnight will start to condensate. It'll rise up and you'll find in the mornings you'll find moisture sitting on the inside of the lid. So we'll put the lid back on, on this one. Let's just get that going. Like that. It sits over the top. Mini hothouse. We've got little vents in here. We don't need them open. Keep them closed for now. That's all you need to do. And in the morning you'll see that the moisture will still be there. It'll condensate on the, on the inside of the lid and it'll just fall back down onto the soil itself and all the seed raising mix and start to hydrate it again. So you don't have to water it every day. But do monitor it because if you do, do get a hot day, and don't worry about a hot day because this will turn off. If it gets hot outside, this will turn off. All you need to do is take the lid off and keep it away from direct sunlight. If, for whatever the reason, in Victoria it gets hot, but any other state, if it's really warm still and it's summer, just put them in a shady spot. They don't have to be in direct sunlight. And the lid on this one here too, folks. And there you have it, your mini hothouse. The alternative of building a huge hothouse, but if you do have a hothouse, you could still put one of these inside. That's with a heat mat, so you can start them off even quicker because it still gets cold at night. So get yourself a little mini hothouse like that. It's the Autumn Hothouse Kit that you'll find on our website. It's almost half price. Check it out on vasilisgarden.com. From me, Vasily, Maresi.